today. I'm joined by Heitner from 360X, and we'll be watching the match that just happened, or the tournament that just happened, Howling Halloween at the Creek, and this is in uh, Orlando, F Florida, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, roughly around there, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, without any, uh, without further ado, we're going to get into this match. And the finals is super stacked. We have 360X, 229V on the Blue Alliance first seed, and we're sorry, Red Alliance first seed, and on the Blue Alliance second seed, we have 550X and 727R. So, what are your thoughts on like uh, this this match here? You're you're in the you're standing right there in the in the drive team. Yeah, um, I mean the match was pretty hype. It, it was a really intense match, um, and I think one of the interesting things that you'll see in this match is Ace actually ended up scoring seven rings on between both wall stakes, um, which was you know a lot of rings just for the fact that the other team like the seven scored rings on wall stakes for the fact that the other team couldn't do wall stakes at all uh, is a big deal. And you'll see that, like, part of the reason that we picked Ace for this tournament is we wanted someone that could do wall stakes, too, just because, you know, take that ability away from someone else. Yeah, uh, definitely. And so, like, so like, we didn't even do wall stakes in this match, even though we load our max a little bit. Yeah. Blue had a super strong so, auto here, ma yeah, matching uh, you and uh, Ace's points. And Blue also does a great job controlling those positive corners up there in the top left. So how do you guys combat that? Like, how do you guys decide to play against event against Blue? having dominant uh play uh, with those wall with those goals because you know blue actually on we didn't like obviously our strategy was to get that third goal we wanted to do that as fast as possible but more importantly we wanted to double uh, a goal in the corner that had you know more of our red rings on it right yeah yeah um, i see yeah i see i think the strategy that you guys played here really well was just that uh you guys ace switched on to to wall stick super super fast here and then also, I yeah. saw that they, you know, they, they when they got the opportunity to, they went for that that goal. Although blue did defend them properly, but they, you know, yeah. they still went for that goal there. So I don't know how much you can actually hear from the stream. Uh, I don't think it had audio, but one of the funny things was that, like, we saw that empty goal, and I immediately saw that, and I was trying to call it out to our team, right? But I yelled really loud. I was like, "Empty goal! Empty goal! Empty goal!" And the other lines heard that, and then just started defending that goal as a result. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of funny. Like that's definitely. I remember last year, especially when you're calling bowls out, right? That that's you call it. So, uh, we we call it so loud, and then the other team is just it already knows what's going on, right? So I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So funny uh, enough, like, like mm -hmm. Tyler, like Tyler, like grabs me a little bit, and he's like, "Oh, don't say it so loud." And then Adam tells me the same thing. And so, like, that, that was one of the, like, the big differences because, you know, obviously it was a 40 to 32 match, so it was really high scoring between the two of us. But had we gotten that third goal, I think there would have been no chance that, like, it wouldn't have even be, been super close. Yeah. Um, and you can see here, you know, like like I said, we load that wall stick, Mike, just to have that ability. But then instead of actually scoring more on that wall stick, we just end up defending there um, yeah. you know, making sure that they can't hang. Yeah, how how was this? Oh, because I mean, Blue didn't really didn't score that many rings there on the on that goal. Do you think Blue could have won if they if they filled that goal entirely up? Um, so it wouldn't have actually made a difference, just because it would have been five more rings for them. Um, yeah, five so more points. It right. been, so it been, mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have been forty to thirty-seven. So they would have yeah. needed that and their hang or you know something like that. Um, but one of the interesting things you're seeing there is also just the scarcity of Blue rings, right? Like. They, they fully filled up two goals. Um, I guess there's one red on their goal that's doubled, but there's also one blue on our goal that's doubled. So they, they offset each other. Um, they fully filled up two goals, and if they filled up that third goal, they wouldn't have had many rings left on the field just to score. Um, so it's one of those things where it comes down to the fact that had like because of that ability not to do wall stakes, you know, there was really like no chance for them to win the match unless they got both positives or a one all on or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely and, like and a they, huge advantage for having those amazing wall stakes. Yeah, and they themselves, they, they played this match pretty well too. Um, I guess one of the things they could have done was if you see that blue alliance stake, they didn't end up scoring ring on there. So, you know, that, that extra top, like that extra top ring plus scoring, you know, a few more on that Mogo makes a difference. But also just had they scored that on the on that wall on that alliance stake you know they might not have had that ability to defend their goals yeah they had yeah so uh, they had they had no no ring on their own alliance stake there towards the end right that would have been three extra points for them right if they had that yeah exactly um right. so and it's one that, of the things about that with a combined with a filled blue goal would have won them that match right so it's not impossible to 
win matches against right, yeah. against uh, teams with full wall stakes, but it's just incredibly hard to do so, right? Uh, this well, blue lines here is incredibly good, and they om they almost made that happen, but still, came just came barely uh, barely off of that. Well, yeah, I, I they would have they would have actually tied had they done that, um, but that just comes down to that that idea of um, of like ring starvation. Right, yeah. like we saw it kind of with tribals last year. Is you're only playing the tribals on the field, but last year, you know, you always had tribals to introduce for the most part. Like you, we really didn't see a lot of teams running out of tribals to use. Yeah. Um, this year we see a lot of it, and it's just like it's strategically thinking. There's a limited number of rings on the field, um, so where do I place those? Mm -hmm. Right, and that's one of the things about this game is there's a lot of times in this match where we thought, you know, we thought like, oh, we need to do this or we're gonna lose, like. You know, there was really no point in the match where, like, wow, we're up by a lot. You know, we can just kind of sit here. We got, we had to, like, it's just a lot of thinking on the fly strategies because there's so many different ways to score in this game. Yeah, well, that's a very excellent match. Uh, Heitner's actually driving right now. He's driving to Hoko, so I know you've been driving for a while today. You drive safe, and, yeah, I won't, we won't, yeah, <laughs> we won't continue, yeah, we won't continue this about, any longer. I think I've done about eight hours today, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, have fun. Thank you. Thank you.